Hello everyone and welcome to season two of the Soon Art Podcast. I'm your host Ross Baxter and today is episode four of the series. The podcast is a weekly series where I bring on guests from the film and game industries. If this is your first time here though and you want to learn how to grow as an artist and learn what it takes to make it as a career, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Today on the show, we have creator of short film Tapped Out. He's the winner of Los Angeles Film Award. We have animator Logan Webb. Logan, thank you so much for coming on. It's a pleasure having you. How are you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing good. Yeah, thanks so much for, for inviting me on. I appreciate it. Anytime. Uh, it's going to be so awesome talking about his, uh, his latest short film. Uh, it's literally just came out, everyone. It's just premiered, so make sure to go check it out. Most importantly, links are in the description. Get involved, take part, and uh, check out the amazing work this man has been doing. So, as always, Logan, we'll start off with the fun old introductions. Tell us a wee bit about yourself, and we'll take it from there. So, uh, I just graduated from Ringling College of Art and Design in May, and uh, before that, I went to the University of Virginia. Uh, I'm from Virginia, and uh, so grew up sort of in in little little town in the middle of nowhere, sort of in the, the mountains in southwest Virginia, and just always loved animation and, and didn't really, you know, it was always something I kind of wanted to do i guess but didn't really know how you went about doing it mm-hmm. until I, I learned about ringling and i uh, had a, a teacher in high school was lucky enough to have a really good art teacher um, he actually taught me in elementary school and in high school and uh he told me about ringling and we me and him actually we went to to ringling when i was in high school and looked around and um you know obviously was really impressed by everything we saw and and uh I actually didn't end up going to Ringling until a little bit later because I needed time to work on my portfolio. That was, yeah. So I went to, went to the other school and then did that for a little while and and got into Ringling four years ago and just finished. And so that's that's kind of it. Awesome. And, and now it's all kicking off for you. It's, uh, it's that time of the of your career now that the everything's kind of falling into place. And it's, it's always nice hearing people's different paths into education because I was the same as you. So I didn't go straight into university. There was um, a different route that I had to um, kind of find my way in. Um, I went to college. So here in the UK, we have like, I'm pretty sure similar to you, but we have like different levels of education in terms of college, then university. Uh, I've always wondered why we do it slightly different. It's, it's always a strange one here in the UK, but it's, uh, I, because that's, I was the exact same as you, because I, le- I had to learn how to make a better reel to apply uh, to uh, to the university so I could get in so if anyone is in that uh, in that process at the moment trust me it, it pays such a it's such a, a great path to go down because you you get to know more people like you said you got to you had a great teacher and uh, the fact that he went um that they went with you as well to the place like that, that's a that's a that's an epic teacher right there that's somebody you want on your on your side anytime yeah yeah definitely and uh and yeah, I mean, it definitely, it took some time to get to Ringling too. I mean, I, <laughs> like, because I applied, or actually, let me go back. I didn't apply when I was in high school, but um, we had, they had a, like a portfolio day, mm-hmm. which is a thing that they have here where like a bunch of different universities will go to like a, um, like a civic center kind of thing. Okay. And, you know, you can go around and talk to like reps to different schools and show them your portfolio. And, um, I remember they had a website and they were like, bring a portfolio like this size. Like they had a, a certain, you know, like certain dimension portfolio they wanted you to bring. They're like, no more, like 15 to 20, like no more than 20, like all this stuff. So, okay. So I, I went and did exactly what they wanted. I got the exact size portfolio. I had exactly 20 things in it, you know, all this stuff. And uh, <laughs> so I, I go, this thing was in another state. So we, we drove like, across state lines to go to this thing and it was me and my family and the art teacher because he went to this too and uh because ringling was going to be there and a bunch of other schools but ringling was the main one and uh so we go and i remember walking in and there's just tons of art students everywhere and i'm not kidding when people have like these huge portfolios like just massive things and and, you know i walk in with my little tiny like yeah book and like I, I remember there's literally a guy who walked by with a wagon full of sculptures 
really whoa okay and yeah i was like uh, yeah i was like okay and then i was thinking either because no i was the only one who followed the rules on like how to present the work so i was like okay either they're gonna like that i did that or no one's gonna actually care about those rules and i'm gonna look like the guy who only brought like my little thing and and it kind of was that way i mean i i (laughs) like the people from ringling were were nice um they were like oh you know you know you need to work um this and that, but like, can they still apply? Whatever. And I was like, okay. And then I went to some other other people who were not positive at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, I mean, I remember I had one guy who was like, you know, how many hours a day do you draw? Like, he was like, yeah. He's like, there's no way you'll like get into the school. Was, if you do, he's like, there's no way you'll like pass. And I was like, oh, okay, that's you know, not what, not what I was expecting. And then I went to another guy who, like, literally, I showed him my portfolio, get, gave it to him. He, like, opened it and kind of flipped through it a few pages. And he just kind of laughed. And he looked at me and he's like, are you serious? Whoa, okay. And I, yeah, and I was like. He really like, said that? Yeah, he, he swear to God, said that. And I was like, you know, just, I didn't know what to say because I was, like, 17 at the time. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, it was just, and that was, like, kind of it. And so I just, like, left kind of on that note. And so then I was like, yeah, like, I can't, I was, then I was like, well, I'm not going to apply now. I need to make this better because mm-hmm. I was afraid I either wouldn't get in or get in and not, you know, make it. So, so yeah, I took two years to work on a portfolio before I even applied to, to Ringling or I think three semesters, almost two years. And, Perfect. Uh, so, yeah. So anyone, <laughs> if anyone's listening, you know, um, it's, it's it's okay to, to take some extra time and do what you need to do to to get there so yeah things are not exactly not exactly going the way you want and you know things can still still end up working out awesome now thanks for sharing that so obviously like the main the main point that you brought up there which is crucial to to a lot of us in the industry is that it takes time to to get yourself on the right path and uh, you just have to uh, be patient with it and uh, do what you can do uh, to get the job done. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And just, um, you know, I think you kind of find out too how uh, how committed you are to actually doing it, you know, when it's not, when things don't exactly work out exactly how you want at the moment you want it to happen, you can kind of find out, you know, what you're willing to do to, to, to get there. And I think that can, can be helpful too, you know. Yeah, so, I don't know. No, no, I appreciate. It. So, when it comes to the world of animation, so we're both <laughs> massive animation fans. We love it. Um, I just want to ask when when did this passion start? When did uh, you realize that you wanted to get into the world of uh, animation? Um, yeah, I think <laughs> the, the, the first time I, I remember. I don't know. Have you ever been to Disney World? So I've not. I, so I've been the one in uh, in Paris. I've never had the okay. chance to go to America. Everyone in my family's been to America except me. <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, that's okay. All right. I've never been anywhere but, but America, so I understand. We're both <laughs> but, at the same uh, playing field. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, um, back, because I, I started going to Disney. My family would take me when I was little, and they, like, when you first walk into Magic Kingdom, there's, like, a little, it's like you're looking, like, down main street at the castle and like off to the side there's like this little theater that no one knew was there like it wasn't advertised it was just like in the back of this building i don't even know what it was but they used to play they had three cartoons they would play on repeat it was steamboat willie flowers and trees and the band concert and this old mickey mouse cartoon Mm -hmm. and i remember just for whatever reason i just love these old cartoons you know they're from the 20s and 30s but i would just sit there and, and watch those over and over again and i remember you know just my like i didn't really know what it was i was too little to I, you know i didn't really understand what <laughs> what i was seeing and then and i think at, at one point i just asked you know my dad what you know what it is and he was explaining you know you know it's like drawings you know you know they change it a little bit or whatever and it moves and um and then i was like oh okay so all i have to do is like know how to draw and then i can do that mm-hmm. and so that was in my you know little kid brain that was all i had to do <laughs> so uh i just started you know they have like 
had little books of like how to draw, you know, Disney characters or whatever. And I would just, you know, got one of those and just would draw all these Disney characters just, you know, hundreds and hundreds of times until I could do it by memory and, Mm -hmm. and just sort of that kind of thing. And, and that was kind of like the first, I guess the beginning of how I got into it. And then I just kind of went from there, but I think that was the, the first, kind of interest in animation that i can remember that's that's where it all began <laughs> yeah that's awesome. yeah and i was i was always weird i was always like way more into cartoons from the 30s and 40s than like the modern day stuff like i've got like every like black and white mickey mouse cartoon on dvd and awesome. i got those when i was little i would sit and watch hours and hours of, of those and yeah so that's that's probably... epic. Here, there's, there's nothing weird about that. That's what we're talking about. We love <laughs> this kind of stuff. I've never been able to have the chance to. I don't get the chance to talk to enough of you. I need to start uh, inter- or interviewing more of you. It's it's always a, a breath of fresh air talking to animators and uh, uh, going. I'm going to ask you about the classics of animation later on. Trust me, I've prepared some fun questions for you, man. Um, but I'm going to ask you a, a fun, a tough question straight off the bat. Uh, okay. Do you have a favorite animated movie? oh gosh the, the pressure is on <laughs> yeah i don't know well i feel like my answers are always like th- these movies that i used to really like when i was little but i haven't seen in a long time mm-hmm. and so then i'm like well do i really because i don't I should watch it again as an adult because it's been a while since i've seen it but i don't know my well what did you what did you enjoy as a kid like was my, there any main ones that stood out to you yeah, I mean, I think like the Land Before Time movies. I mean, especially the first one. You know, the first one was was a little more legitimate, I think, than because there's like 15 of them or something. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, the first Land Before Time, I really like the Iron Giant. Um, I really like Fantasia. Yep, yeah, good choices. Um, okay. Which, yeah, I'm like no, you know, like people at Ringling, especially because we're in computer animation. You know, and a lot of people were not as big into the the 2D animation. Mm-hmm. and a lot of people have never even seen Fantasia and I remember I talked to people I'm like have you not seen Fantasia that's like one of those Disney movies you have to like you can't not watch it yeah and if people try to watch it and they get bored and they don't you know they don't see they, it they don't understand <laughs> and I'm like yeah it takes like 45 minutes I'm like if you just wait to get past because there's like you know the fairies and the mushrooms like that's cool but like you have to get to like you know Mickey and the Dance of the Hours and the Night on Bald Mountain like you have to get to those really good ones and but um which i really like fantasia um none of those i've said are computer animated so i should probably say a no, computer it, animated movie <laughs> here, what, it doesn't matter if that's if that's what you enjoyed the most trust me we'll talk about that because all the like you named some gl- great classics and it's it's been really interesting right like what's the chances of this so my last four guests right literally mm-hmm. four podcasts in a row so the first two said um the black cauldron right and then the mm-hmm. last two episodes is the lamb before time it's oh, so, okay <laughs> so what is the chances of that so you said the lamb before time my guest yesterday said the lamb before time now, <laughs> i'm a dinosaur nerd i love dinosaurs to bits so it's it's been such a weird week this week everyone's like saying it's great i love it so no nah, i appreciate your answer so thanks for that so lamb before time fantasia and what was the third one? Iron Giant. Good choice as Iron well. Iron Giant, yeah. Dude, Iron Giant is... Uh, the first time I saw that in... I'm not sure if you've seen it, but have you seen... Um, oh, gosh, my mind's gone blank. Uh, Ready Player One. No, I, I missed that. There's so many movies that came out like the last four years. Like, mm-hmm. There's a ton of movies I just missed because I just couldn't. I didn't have time to do it. So Too I'm like, slowly trying to catch up on like the last four years of music and TV that I just... It's like I go to school and it's like you're into this vacuum and you're just doing... Just doing you know, the work. Just doing your work. And so I haven't seen it, but I have seen like little like bits, you know, in trailers or whatever. The Iron Giant is in that to mm-hmm. some capacity. So that's that's cool. Oh, it's a, it's a cool scene, man. I think you'll like it. Right. <laughs> so speaking of the world of animation and uh, obviously we can't do this podcast without talking about Tapped Out. Uh, so the main reason we have... Uh, Logan on the on the show today was I came across his uh, very successful short film Tapped Out. So let's dive into the whole world of Tapped Out. Um, yeah, my ca- good. I thought my ca- yeah my camera turned on and off for there for a second. I don't know why. 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, so what inspired you to make this? And tell us a wee bit, a wee bit about it. Yeah. So, um, so at Ringling, when you're when you're a senior, you have to well, let me back up. When you're a junior, you have to pitch basically eight um, ideas for what your senior thesis might be, and the faculty basically picks two, and then you develop two ideas, um, sort of to like final storyboards, and then at the end of that, they basically faculty votes and they pick which one you're you're going to do. Mm-hmm. Or if they, if both are like good enough, you can do the one you want to do. And um, so after my, I guess, sophomore year, um, I went home for summer and I, I had this little like pocket sketchbook and I was trying to just write down any idea I might have because I knew I had to, you know, have something to, to show up with. Because on day one um, of the pre-production class, you have to come in with like four ideas and pitch them. So anyways, I went to this, like, it was like the day after I got home, I went to this restaurant and they sat us in like the bar area. And so I'm just like looking around, like trying to, you know, literally just looking at everything and trying to get an idea of something to, for an idea. Yeah. Then I just noticed like one of the, the beer tap handles was like a fish or like a shark or something. I don't know. And I was like, that's kind of cool. I was like, I didn't never thought of that being, that could be a character if it's a fish. And then I you know, started looking it up and found all these little tap handles of little pirates and, you know, knights and I even found some Vikings. And um, I was like, that's cool. I was like, that kind of feels like Toy Story, but like it sort of is like a little more grown up in a way, like the environment that this character would be in is, you know, it could, I don't want to say edgy, but it, it could have like, you know, a bit of an edge, you know, and it feels sort of unique. So I kind of like that idea. Mm-hmm. And so... I ended up before pre-production class because we have story classes like all through you know throughout school, and I I had an assignment that had to take place in a bar. I was like, okay, cool. So I'll I'll use the the beer tap idea. So I had all sorts of different ideas of you know this beer tap character. Most of them were very basic and trivial, and you know didn't go anywhere. Um, But then I had a one idea where I, because at first it was just like this character in the bar and there was, there was other like beer tap handle characters, but I didn't have any people in it. And then I had the idea to, to bring in a person that kind of made a big difference and sort of made me realize the the potential for the, the story turned into, because I had a couple of different versions of, of this story before it got to what I used. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of basically, um, how the story came about and then there's a there's a bar near my house um, it's called the bowery it's like this famous place because there's this um, band called alabama i don't know if you it's like a oh, country, right yep country band yeah they they like got their start in this this local bar and so it's like this this sort of like uh famous place to hang out here because where i live is like a vacation town so like every summer there's like people on vacation come here and go there so i I went there and it, which is, this is the place I based the bar off of. And it's kind of, you know, this sort of small bar and it's kind of, you know, just sort of tight and smoky and kind of has the, you know, same sort of feeling. And so I just took a bunch of reference pictures and, you know, a lot of things I saw in in there ended up in the film, like the pool table, like Mm. the pool table that's in this place is like the same model that I built and, you know, put in there and, and, and so, yeah, it just all kind of came together, I guess, from a few different places. But that's sort of big picture, I guess, where awesome. it came from. No. I feel like I'm rambling. <laughs> you. Great job. Awesome. So thank you for sharing that. Because, first of all, I think the it, it's an incredible environment. I really love it. Uh, the, the standard is it's it's insane. And it's, uh, it's a powerful message. So we were talking about this before we went live. The... This is why it's always great seeing when people are going down uh, trying to find a story. Yes, it takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. But sometimes just using uh, like just our daily lives or things that are happening in the world. Um, so obviously the main the main uh, message of the short film is basically don't drink, drive, like don't go out. Mm-hmm. Uh, because obviously, obviously it, but you, you added your own spin to it and you made it fun. Like you made it entertaining 
um, how the character like just jumps off instantly. Go, go time uses the dart, throws it. It's like you're not going anywhere, mate. That key's staying put, and then everything just pops off. Everything's going going crazy, and it's it's all about trying to figure out how to make things enter, um, entertaining and uh, fun to watch. Um, but speaking of the art style, like what made you choose the way that it looked? Like when was there was a reason to go down that kind of aesthetic? <laughs> Well, you know, I started modeling the environment first. That was like the, uh, over summer. I got started on that because I know I put like the the way it works at Ringling. You don't really have time. Like, there's no set time to make the environment. Mm-hmm. Like when you start off, you have to make the characters, and then like, oh yeah, like while you're making the characters, like sort of find time to make the environment. And I was like, that's not going to work. So, you know, over summer, I just started doing the environment, and you know, I had all these these reference pictures I took. And I, I wanted it to, to feel, you know, not photorealistic, but, but pretty realistic because I, you know, I wanted it to feel real. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I wanted you to forget because because sometimes I think if it's, I mean, some some films have a really cartoony style that that's purposeful and, and that's cool. But sometimes things have a really cartoony style because it's just sort of the limitations of what a person maybe can can accomplish Mm -hmm. and you know there's there's sort of a difference when you can definitely tell when it's purposeful and when it's not um i just wanted to 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 feel real and feel like it's a lived in environment and just you know feel sort of old and sort of um i don't know sort of like the bar itself kind of rough around the edges you know kind of place yeah and so i started doing sort of modeling that and then the environment got you know sort of realistic as I was modeling it, and then that kind of affected how I designed the the Viking because I did him next, and because um, he was more cartoony because um, you know the way I drew him and painted him beforehand, and I kind of thought I wanted him to, to be that way, but then then he he was a little too silly for the environment, so then I had to sort of make him a little more you know sort of stoic and heroic looking and all that kind of stuff, so. So it kind of, as I was building things, it kind of, it kind of inspired everything else I was trying to, you mm-hmm. know, sort of do at the same time. But, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I didn't have a, you know, like I said, like a super, um, like the art direction wasn't super specific in terms of it was kind a, of a certain unique style. Yeah, I didn't really want to. I was also afraid too. I didn't want to to try something like I knew, like if I use, if I have solid reference and I try to go off that, I, I kind of know what the, the end result will look like. Mm-hmm. And I knew if I tried to just do something totally crazy or unique or something, you know, I, I wasn't sure what that would look like, which made me nervous because there's not really a lot of time to, to go back and fix it. Yeah. So, so I just felt like that was sort of a safer, <laughs> safer way to go about it. Yeah. So that was, that was kind of it. Perfect. Yeah. Cause well, I think that's that's very smart because at a day, it's sometimes you have to play within your limits. You have to know what your strengths are and mm-hmm. realize where can you really maximize your time. Because, like you said, at Ringling, um, yes, I don't know the course, but through my experience after interviewing um, a few students from the course who have uh, obviously graduated, uh, like yourself, it's um, there's a lot of independence involved, which which is great, but it's also there's a lot of pressure, and you have to kind of figure out, right? How can I maximize my time? Where should I be putting my efforts, and uh, most importantly, develop a result that's going to get you a job at the end of the day, because that's what you're aiming to achieve. And uh, I guess also most importantly, you want to have fun, you want to enjoy making it, and because yeah. um, you don't you, you don't be choosing a project that you're just going to be like. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. It just uh, it, 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 that, <laughs> yeah. those projects never really uh, turn out well. They're they're great experiences because you learn. But I think that's the the really nice thing, and I'm pretty sure you'll agree with me when it comes to uh, when it comes to the films that are getting made these days. They already have that kind of it's like healthy balance between it's like realism but also cartoon. Like when it, when I were when I first watched Up for the first mm-hmm. time, I was like. Yes, it's kind of it has its typical um, 
mood etc that you'd normally feel from an animated movie but it also feels realistic as well based off the mm-hmm. rendering like the way they probably did look dev the lighting etc etc and it's a great combination it's that contrast it's the same thing when i watch your movie it's uh the environment has that same feel and it's a really nice touch and it's it's always a it's it's maybe hard to pull off i don't know do you think it's harder to achieve that when there's that contrast or do you think it's a wee bit it's actually easier because i know you said you didn't want to overcomplicate things yeah i think um i think in some ways maybe it's easier because there's maybe less that you have to figure out on your own you know if you're the, the closer you're trying to match to to reality i mean that that becomes difficult in and of itself because it's difficult to achieve that sort of level of detail. Mm-hmm. But it also, but I guess it's more about just, you, you know what you have to achieve as opposed to coming up with what you're trying to do and then doing it. So I guess it's in some ways it's easier and in some ways it's, it's more difficult. Um, so I think, yeah, just you have to know what you want to do. And if it, you know, like is having an environment with like a, an art direction that no one's ever seen before, which, by the way, if you're going to do that, like that's a really difficult thing to do because most things have been done, and you know, so that's a, the whole thing you have to deal with. But um, yeah, it's not the easiest to stand out. It's, uh, but, but then again, I guess that's when it comes to standing out, though. It's all about the execution, and like yeah. you said, yes, maybe it may seem that you're doing a similar style, but if you do it well, then that's that's all that matters because you're wanting to become an animator and you're um you're focusing on your craft and at the day like i said go back to the main point it's all about execution and as long as you can deliver a good result like, that's all people care about because we can, we can all tell like you can be ex- you can experiment like crazy but if you don't do a good job of it everyone's gonna know <laughs> yeah. it's gonna be so easy to be like i appreciate you maybe trying this but that's not going to help you get the job so uh, it's a good avenue and i i would have done the exact same thing so carrying on this conversation about the the project i wanted to ask this 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 question because i think it's important what was the most challenging thing about this whole experience and this journey uh, making this film yeah i think i think the most challenging thing probably i don't mean for this to be like a like a cheat answer kind of, but I think just the, the amount that had to be done mm-hmm. it's in the, you know, in a very limited amount of time, I think, you know, we, and I don't know if Jeremy and Shear talked about this at all, but it's, but I, I know because I was with them in the labs in the library and, you know, it, you're working seven days a week, long hours, you know, staying up all night sometimes, you know, and, and it's just every every day for like a year you know and it gets it gets really tough mm-hmm. to, to do that and that kind of schedule and so i think just sort of the kind of mind over matter you know just trying to stay with it and get it done uh, is, is really tough um because i think i mean it you know animation versus modeling versus lighting i mean that kind of depends on just what you're good at i guess you know mm-hmm. what your your strengths are but but yeah, just showing up every day and, and doing what you need to do. I think that got that got tough. I mean, I, by the end of it, we were all definitely ready to be done, especially with the everything with the virus. You know, we had to go home and, and finish at home. And uh, so it was, which gave us a little more time to, to work, but then it, it also drug it out, you know, longer we had to keep doing it. And, it, you know, it just, it was a little brutal <laughs> by the time it was, it was time to turn it in. Um, it was a proper a proper adventure. It's because uh, <laughs> yeah. I think when every time I see your work, um, it truly does amaze me. Like uh, I really do. Oh, wow. Like you've you've truly like, trust me. Seeing all the people that I've talked to, so I've talked to the last obviously had the privilege of talking to yourself, Sheer and Jeremy, and it's really breathtaking the work you made. Like. All the the hard work you put in, man, you deserve it. I can't wait to see what happens um, with your journey, and I'll obviously keep in touch. I can't wait to see what you create because the you guys have like set the benchmark of animation. Like I've seen a lot of animators, and yes, I'm not I'm no master in the, the world of animation, but I've been around in the industry and I've learned a lot. And it's crazy the standard of work getting produced by you these days and i think that goes back to the main point like 
But when I asked you that question, like, what was the challenging part? You were literally grinding nonstop for a year. Like, it was literally nonstop. I remember when I was studying un- in university, it was the same thing, but it's a different, it's a different, um, like your, your story is completely different because you guys are having to make a whole film. Um, first time making a film, I, I assume. It's, it's, it's not the easiest yeah. thing to be asked. And you're not only having to uh, make animation. Animation's your passion. That's what you care about. But you're now having to make everything else. Like there's a there's you're having to learn how to make good rigs so that your animation, which, which is the thing you care about the most, actually works so you can get the job done. And that whole technical aspect. Oh gosh. Yeah. The first time, dude, I did rigging. I was terrified. It was. Uh, it was. There's so oh, much yeah. to learn. I mean, rig- rigging is rigging is not that much fun. I mean. <laughs> and uh yeah i mean you're absolutely right it's, it's one of those things too. and it all builds on each other too so there's kind of that pressure of you know when you when you first start it's like okay we have to model everything but, and you're modeling your characters and you're, you kind of know in the back of your mind okay if i don't model this right then the rig is not going to work correctly mm-hmm. so i got to model everything so that the rig works and if it's not great it, it has to be at least you know to the point that i can kind of hide what doesn't work it, it, there's, you know there's things in my rigs too that don't work that you just you know hide and you know, Photoshop little things. Oh, the magic, you, you love it. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and then you have the same thing with the, the rig. You know, you have to get the rig to work because if the rig doesn't work, you can't animate. And, you know, all, all these things build on each other. So there's that sort of constant pressure of if I don't do this right, then everything else, you know, the dominoes are not going to line up mm-hmm. and, and, you know, to fall where you want them to. So, so yeah, it's just a, a lot of pressure. And, I mean, I think... You know, when we animated, I think we had eight weeks to animate the whole thing. Eight weeks? Uh, yeah, I mean, it ended, it ended up going past that because we, you know, we all, or most of us, I guess, went back and, and worked on it. But we had eight weeks before the faculty voted, you know, pass, fail. And if, because they, they vote in December. And so in December, basically, you have like a play blast version of the film, just, you know, pre-rendered. And you show that to the whole school or the whole computer animation you know, student body, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then the faculty all go and vote whether you pass or fail. And if you fail, you just, you either don't come back or you do it all over again. And, and so and do you have to pay for that. Yeah. <laughs> I, so it's, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's totally brutal. There's no, you know, not a lot of room for error. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, it's just a lot of, a lot of pressure and uh, yeah, just a lot of, a lot of work and just not losing focus you know just just keep going you know yeah other people you know maybe going out and having fun and you know watching movies and things and you know sleeping eight hours a night and all the things you wish you could do and sometimes you just can't you just can't do it and yeah. so it, it gets it gets a little tough you know after a while but you, you kind of know that going into it you know so that's just part of it but thanks but thanks. yeah it's definitely tough Thanks for sharing that, man. I really do appreciate it because this is the information that I care about the most. This is the information of student education, which the whole podcast is all about. It's all about helping students. And the one thing, though, that because education is completely different in America compared to, well, not completely, but there, obviously there's major similarities as well. But I think this the, the marking system, based on what I've heard, is very strict i think that is a bit well i think that is harsh in terms of financial i am um, i think there has to be a wee bit of room for error sometimes uh I, I i don't i think it's too harsh when you're just like right if you don't do this you've everything you've paid for you're instantly out in a way i think that's uh, that that should be that should be changed and um, so i appreciate you diving into that uh, i'm looking forward to seeing what changes in the industry and uh, I wonder what happens to Ringling in terms of their course, like what they change in the future um, on on that side of things, because it is it is a lot to uh, to do. And if you're not having any downtime, like if you're working all the time, because I was the exact same as you. Like when I was in education, I've told this story many times in the podcast. I lost three stone in my education, mm-hmm. so I lost uh, what thirty odd pounds of mm-hmm. of weight just by working all the time, because all I cared about was getting the job done. And there's not much discussion about um, or modules that are purely on your health. Like I think it'd be great if there was a module in education just about fitness or you did fitness for the day. 
that's mm-hmm. part of your module that you just did just something i don't know everyone went walking or did their animation drawings and it um outside one of my lectures was great at it he used to take us to the museum and we'd all go sketching just for fun just to get out of the uni- the university so when it comes to obviously the the health side of things it's super important and fingers crossed things do get better but uh, on a contrast to that what was the what was the highlight like what was the most fun thing about making this film what did you enjoy the most was, I mean, I, th- <laughs> I think, you know, probably the, the most fun thing about making it was probably just, you know, some of the people you're around while you're doing it and, you know, being able to, you know, we, we started out um, as freshmen with like a hundred, I think maybe a little over a hundred people. Mm-hmm. We ended up only having, I think like 43 graduated. It's like mm-hmm. a crazy number. So there really wasn't that, that many of us. And, um, you know, just in the labs or the library, you know, every day it was like the same few people and, you know, you get really close and you're all like sort of dying together, you know, trying to like <laughs> make this thing and, and everybody knows what you're, what you're going through. And, and so that, that kind of, you know, I think that kind of made it like possible to, to actually do it without just like totally giving up and not wanting to do it. Like I, I was talking to Jeremy the other day, like so many times it would be just um, me and him in the library and because the library is 24 7 um hours so you could never leave if you didn't want to <laughs> and uh you're just you know, living there <laughs> yeah we would just stay up all night you know we'd work until you know six seven o'clock in the morning and we'd go somewhere and get breakfast and then go pass out for a few hours and but it, you know it was, it was fun to it was fun in some ways to you know you have the crazy schedule and all that but you've also got friends doing the same thing and you know, kind of, I don't know, sort of, uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's like, you're all just geeking out together, going through, going <laughs> through the madness. Yeah. It's, it's someone, I guess, to share the, share the pain with, you know, the struggle and kind of makes it fun. But also, you know, I, I did too. I like, I enjoyed making it. Um, I mean, I enjoyed, you know, animating it and lighting it and, you know, you know doing like the rendering and stuff, kind of seeing it, come together and it actually you start to see kind of what it looks what it's going to look like because yeah, you know when you first start lighting it, it you know it looks pretty bad because you don't know where you're going to put the lights and you know does it look better here or there or, you know whatever but when you kind of figure it out and you you kind of like i remember a couple of shots like i i got lit kind of early and it's like okay this is like the target what we're going for like i think this looks like what i want it to look like and so you can kind of see it come together a little bit because when it's a play blast you know it's all ugly and you know, it's like everything's a gray, but the characters have like just flat colors and, you know, it looks kind of, even if the animation's good, it still looks kind of lame, you know, and so it's kind of nice to, to see it sort of come to life. Yeah. So I think, I think that was kind of nice. It kind of felt like, you know, you could actually see some progress of what it was going to be. So, so that was kind of nice. Awesome answer because, uh, oh, rendering dude, like, uh, I know you used to use Arnold, didn't you? And, uh, yeah, yeah, we did. And uh, I was uh, I'm a big fan of Arnold uh, V Ray as well. V Ray's my uh, my best friend. I, I love I love using V Ray. <laughs> <laughs> I can use that for days. But I, I, I'm the same as you. Is like when the once you've put so much work into something, uh, like you've literally sacrificed sweat and tears, blood, sweat and tears, the famous phrase, and then you finally get to the end of the tunnel, and the, the image is just loading up on the render screen. You're just like. It was worth it. <laughs> it was worth it. it. It it may have been exhausting. It may have been stressful, but it was worth it. Because um, when it came to your film as well, like um, obviously we've talked about the highs, the lows, and stuff. Uh, another thing that I thought was also really nice with your piece is your Easter eggs. So oh, yeah. <laughs> you added some really fun Easter eggs in your piece because. I am always on the hunt for Easter eggs, so every time I watch anything or anyone who I ask on the podcast, I begin searching. So, mm-hmm. so obviously, you had Frank Frazette as work, uh, yeah. uh, and the, the title, his name, uh, of the, the 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 pub as well. And I also like on the back, um, of like behind the bar, that you have certain messages that relate to basically like don't drive <laughs> so it's like yeah. basically don't do it and then the fun one is like when the the dart gets thrown at the door and the guy's key slows down and then it, it cuts to the next shot and then it says basically on one of this uh the on one of the on the signs it's like no exit or something like that 
So basically, mm-hmm. he's like, you're, you're not allowed to leave. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think it says, like, dead end or something. Yeah, dead end, that's the one, yeah. yeah. So it says that, so basically, it's like, once again, it ties into the story. You're not allowed to leave because you're drinking. Um, because you've you, obviously if you go into the car and then obviously the funny the funny I I could not I could not stop laughing right when he swaps the car uh, the keys over um he t- he takes the guy's key and he gives him the uh the axe and then when he when he when the 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 Viking just goes back to his usual spot he just like starts smirking he's like ha ha <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's just like I, I I achieved my goal and the guy just face plants right against the car. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm glad you you enjoyed it, and it's funny too. Um, you know, talking about it takes so long to make the thing. Like, you know, the the only people who saw it was the faculty, you know, and the other students in your class. Mm-hmm. You know, the other seniors. But like, like when you switch the keys and you said you laughed, like it's one of those things where you know you show the faculty and they don't really laugh that much. They might laugh a little bit, you know, but they're mm-hmm. looking at it very critically. So it's kind of that. You know, there's someone. Some animator said one time, you know, animation is telling a joke and then waiting three years to see if anyone laughs. And, you know, and that's kind of like it is. You don't know if people are going to laugh at it. Is you know, is it actually funny? Is it just funny to you? You know, does it work? So, so the first time people actually laughed at that was in December when I showed the Play Blast version of it, and we showed that to the underclassmen and they laughed at it. It's like the first time you're like, okay, like people do laugh at it. It is funny. Like it's going to work. I think you know. So that's kind of nerve wracking too. You don't know if people are going to like it or not, or if it's going to be funny or not funny or, you know, so, so it's nice to hear that people you know, react to it the way you want them to. Yeah. So that's, Here, that's good. That, that's a, that's a, a really important uh, discussion to go down to because here, I'm going to have to write that down. I've, I've never talked about this in the podcast. So thanks for bringing <laughs> this up. We have finally have the chance. Uh, that's a great point to bring up is because I understand that, um, so I've brought up like people obviously people have like imposter syndrome etc. Maybe they 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 um, they struggle maybe getting their work out there. Like I've talked I have talked a wee bit about imposter syndrome, but I've not talked about it from your perspective of is the film going to get what I expected it to be? And so in terms of is the message clear? Is the humor clear? Like you said, and humor is such a hard thing. I feel for because you can tell when people get things wrong and it's the same mm-hmm. with animation you can tell when something works uh when it just looks a wee bit wrong like one of the hardest things that i fought for your film which you nailed perfectly was when uh he slides on the glass uh the mm-hmm. the glass uh, what do you call it mm-hmm. the, like the, the mug yeah the, the mug and he slides all the way across because he's obviously trying to catch the guy um, catch him up um, before he goes onto the pool table and how smooth you did that like I, I, in my head I'm like he must have spent ages trying to make that that look so to actually pull that shot off because that looked a very challenging shot to do yeah th- yeah that was a, a tough shot and that was that, that's one of my favorite shots so I, I spent you know probably more time on it than I should have trying to get that right um well it looks you nailed it man trust me it, it, it looks right <laughs> I appreciate it it's, it's funny um I don't know, have you ever seen the the TV show Cheers? It's an old show, Cheers. American show. It's like I, a sitcom. I don't think I have. The, I don't. That's not a show that I've watched, but I've seen it. But mm-hmm. um, when I was when I was coming up with a story, I had to come up with you know like the the things he was going to do to try to stop the guy. So once once I settled on the story of him trying to stop the guy from driving, I had to come up with you know fun things for him to do. So I was just looking for references and on the show cheers and it's kind of old i think it might be from like the 80s maybe i don't know i should probably know that but there's this scene where the guy they've got a bar like mine is that sort of hooks around it's not, it's not straight and there's a guy like on the past the curb and he's asking for a beer and they're like talking to the bartender it's like oh show him your trick or whatever and he takes the beer mug and he and it's fake it's not real but he's he slides it in it and the beer mug spins and goes around it goes around the curb which is how I got, I was like, ah, oh, that's cool. And so that was sort of how that shot came about. Cause I was like, oh, it can hook around so I can, um, you know, have him slide on the spear mode. Cause at first I had him like the guy, the drunk guy like knocked over the beer and that spelt, there's that spelt spilled all on the, the bar and the, the Viking like slid across it, like a, you know, slip and slide or something. And it was a lot yeah. more lame than what it, <laughs> what it ended up being. But anyway, that's just where that shot comes from if anyone 
is interested in that kind of thing. Um, no, th- th- thanks for but, explaining it. But yeah, it, it was it was tough. Um, you know, the, the slow motion thing, because I, I tried, you know, I have all these controls on the mug, because, you know, I have, to, I have to make that slide, I have to have him hooked up to it. So there's all these locators that his hands and feet can be, you know, connected to, so he, he'll follow the mug. And I've, I tried to have, I, you know, I tried to animate the mug by hand, and it was kind of weird. So I ended up just making like a, a curve that followed the, the path of the bar and sort of rigged the mug to follow that exact path. And then you could just animate the speed of it, you know. Um, and then I, I just, I did it at full speed. Um, and then I just sort of took those keys and sort of retimed it out. So it was slow motion. And then Maya has like some, you know, like slow-mo tools that didn't really work as, as well as I wanted them to. So I just kind of ended up doing it by hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I just did it at speed first and then, and then slowed it down afterwards. But but it definitely took a while to get that right. It took a while to get it right, and it took a long time to render the shot because I couldn't get Maya to render the glass mug because you know the, the mug is like you know half of the shot, and it's so much glass that if you start trying to render it, and the, the render farm just can't handle it, and it'll just send back a black frame. And so it's it, you know it was it was so annoying to try to get that rendered, but it paid so off anyway, the yeah. end though. A long story short, yeah, it was it was tough, but I think it was worth it because I think that's probably my favorite shot, or well, at least one of my favorite shots. So, so it was cool, but yeah, it, it took a lot of a lot of experiments to, mm-hmm. to get it to work. Awesome, yeah, because it's you can tell because that was actually my, my next question, and you answered it already, so I appreciate you answering that. You can tell that was like going to be like one of the main shots of the whole the whole thing that really sold it and took it to that next level. And you mentioned a few things there, though, that are that are crucial to us as artists and just as people. Like we need to go through those really difficult times of um, experimenting, things crashing, renders can go crazy sometimes. We've all experienced the difficulty of mm-hmm. rendering. You name it. There's always going to be like everything will work except for one thing, and you're trying to figure out why is it not working. And yeah. that that's just a big part and parcel of the industry that we're all like everyone's trying to get into so when it comes to getting into industry uh, i like to highlight the importance of this like you'll be given tasks that maybe people don't even have a clue how to do it and you and then you'll be assigned to do that and you're just gonna have to figure it out and uh but that's the great thing about learning it's all about uh getting thrown curveballs and trying to figure figure out how to how to get the job done and obviously you were saying there about like camera shots as well um, a big part of making a film is cameras and understanding the importance of cameras. What did you learn about working with cameras and what was that experience like? Yeah, it was it was kind of tough. I mean, we like all the assignments we'd had before this. You know, it might have two shots, and maybe three at the most. I don't. I think I only did like two shots, and it would be, you know, shot number one, and then it cuts to shot number two. You know, over the course of like a fifteen second test, because that was all we had really done. And then you know, all of a sudden. You, know, you have your your storyboards which is you know kind of a rough guide of what it's or in my case it was a rough guide because my storyboards were not good you know that's not my that's not my thing but you have kind of an idea of what the cameras are going to do but yeah it's one of those things where you know you watch movies and you have story class and you you kind of in your head understand how it works but knowing how it works and actually doing it are two very different things and when we had layout I remember my teacher, he he said the one, like the very first day, he's like the one thing to not do when you're a senior, he's like, don't get behind on your layout because you go from layout to animation. And he's like, if you get behind on layout, you get behind on animation. He's like, there's already not enough time to animate it. So don't, don't do that. And that was exactly what I did. I was a week behind animation because my layout, it took so long to get the layout there. And um, it is really tough. I mean, I remember like, you know, I had like the first pass layout and there's no animation. You just have like a single pose and, you know, he's like translating across the screen kind of, you know, it's, it's really hard to even watch what's happening. And, um, the faculty would be like, Oh yeah, I'm confused. I don't know where, you know, the pull table next to the dartboard, you know, where is it at? I don't know where anything is, which is not a good thing to hear, you know? <laughs> so it, it took a while to sort of figure it out and make it, make it work. And, I ended up cutting a lot of shots um, that I didn't need and just trying to simplify how many cuts there were. 
and get that number down and and uh, yeah, and then you end up changing the, the cameras too with the animation sometimes because sometimes you know you might have you know ten seconds for a shot and the shot ends up being five seconds because when you actually animate it you know, it goes a lot quicker. Maybe you need more time. Maybe you need to make it twice as long. And so it, it was kind of just learning as you go and just kind of trying to see what felt right. But, but yeah, working with cameras is definitely tough because, yeah, it was the first time you'd ever done it. You know, you go from doing one or two shots and my film had 40 shots. Oh, boy. Know, so, <laughs> yeah, so it's like, uh, you know, there's not really a lot of preparing for it. You just kind of have to just do it and keep doing it and, keep getting feedback from people who have done it before, you know, or at least the faculty, if they haven't done layout, they've at least taught other people who have done it before, you know, in the class. So, so yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know. Yeah. No, it was definitely a learning curve. Yeah. It's um, like, I'm glad you said about layout because have you, so I like to talk about this because uh, he's, he's a good friend of mine. He's helped me out a ton of my career. Have you ever watched or read the book Setting the Scene? I've heard of it. I don't. I don't think I've read it. Oh, you love it, man! It's. Uh, I know, obviously, uh, animation is your thing, but uh, like Leo, like you said, is like the creme de la creme. Setting the Scene is uh, a book written by a Disney legend called Fraser McLean, and uh, Fraser was one of the main, uh, the main people behind Tarzan and One Hundred One Dalmatians. And mm-hmm. uh, he's now teaching in Brazil, but he mentored me um, and taught me a ton uh, in my career, and he's helped me a lot. And his book teaches animators how to use space a lot better and how to save time in, in areas where most people tend to overthink it or waste time. And mm-hmm. like you said, you have to figure all these cameras, uh, camera, mo- camera movements out. And you can also save a lot of time. Like, you can... You can learn how to cheat a lot of shots if you lo- use layout wisely and use your camera wisely. And um, like one of the topics that I've not been able to talk on the podcast is editing. Like for example, uh, Premiere. Like I use Premiere every day now, not just because of my podcast and stuff, but it's um, it plays a big part in what I do now uh, with my job, etc. But like, what was it? What was it like learning Premiere for the first time? Like, uh, I was it a, was it a daunting experience, or was it like? Is there any advice you would give? Uh, well, we had a little bit of experience because we did the we would make animatics with Premiere. Mm-hmm. So, like in the before we were doing our thesis, we had like our story classes. You know, we had storyboards and we would put it in Premiere and cut it up and time it out. You know, so I had you know, and then even what I know how to do with Premiere is, is pretty limited. I mean, you know, I don't know how to do anything super fancy with it, but uh, we had a little bit of experience um, with that. Um, but yeah, it is. That's kind of a learning curve too. I mean, like the the very first time we did that, it's one of those things where, you know, you're trying to learn. Even like you're trying to learn how to use Photoshop and Premiere, and you're trying to learn how to use Maya and you know Substance Painter, all these different things, kind of at the same time. And yeah, it gets it gets a little tough to, you know, you're trying to remember how to do everything and trying to juggle all these different programs. And you know, I'm not a, a, a not a super it maybe sounds weird to say I'm not a super tech savvy guy. Okay. And even before doing, I mean, I'm more so now, but even before I came to school, I, I wasn't a, you know, a big com- computer nerd guy who, you know, like, you know, Jeremy is very much a computer nerd. I'll go ahead and say that. That's okay. And, uh, he, you know, he knew a lot of things that I would, I was constantly asking him questions about all this stuff because he used Premiere and, and Maya, you know, in high school and, you know, I turned it on for the first time in college, and I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I feel like I'm rambling. I don't even know what the question was. But no, here it's fine. Like uh, <laughs> you, you're doing a great job, man. Trust me, it's awesome talking to you. It's uh, pr- premier to me. Like I try to keep things as simple as possible. Like I'm pretty sure everything uh, that you know, it's uh, it it does the job. Like all you need to know is how to cut shots. Um, in terms of using the timeline as efficiently as possible and not trying to I think like experiment is key but when you're limited to say you've got a year you've got a year to work with and if I had to say to the students listening like, what would I get what would I recommend to use uh, in Premiere so I would learn 
how to understand uh, color, but don't overuse the tools with color. I'd keep it simple. Use the timeline, learn how to cut shots, etc. Like I was saying, there's um, you can experiment with the audio volume as well um, by using audio gain. Uh, that's something I use. It's very simple, nothing complex. You just right click on the timeline and you can add or decrease audio um, just so you can experiment with that. And to be honest, you don't really need to know that much. You can um, scale images, etc. Um, and uh, when it comes to learning new software, we tend to want to learn all these different things, but less is sometimes more. And um, like you said, if you're going into your final year of education, um, and it goes back to what your teacher is saying, is like you're already falling behind on animation, so you're going to have to make sure to use your time wisely as you can. Like, how long did you have to make this film? So I know you said, so is it literally just a year to make this entire thing? Um, that's about a year and a half. So we, um, so when you're a junior, your second semester, um, I don't know how it works in the UK. So if anything I'm saying doesn't make sense, just you can stop me. But, um, you know, semester, you have two semesters in a year. Mm -hmm. And the second semester of junior year is pre-production. So that's the you know, come up with a story, write a script, character designs, environment designs, and, you know, do the storyboards, all that stuff. But you have to do that. So in one semester, you have to pitch your eight ideas and take two of those all the way to final storyboards, final character designs, all that. Um, so you have a semester to, to do that. Then they pick the idea. And then you have basically that summer and then senior year to do all production. So that's um, all your modeling, all your rigging, all your lighting, animation, you know, rendering, you know, doing all your After Effects stuff in Nuke. Um, so it's about a year and a half, maybe maybe a little less. I don't know how many months that is, but yeah, but yeah, you know, senior years for the actual production. Th thanks for so. saying that. Yeah, because uh, I so I I think the the good thing though for that, and I think there is one thing that I think education could learn from is. So when I when in in the UK basically our final year is literally just one whole project, but mm -hmm. having that extra half a year, extra six months, can really make or break uh, your piece. Like having that extra time will go such a long way, because mm -hmm. I feel education should push more towards learning your specialty um, as soon as possible, or and also focusing on quality. So if you get an extra six months to do that. Um, or and focus on the story, which is the thing that's going to really sell the piece. Then, like, like that's super important. Um, so one of the questions I wanted to ask you next is: Is there anything you wanted? To, is there anything else you wanted to add? Is is there? Since, have you run out of time? I know you like we all run out of time, but was there anything in particular you wish? Oh, I wish I added this. Oh. yeah. There's there's actually a few things I would have liked to to add. I think. The, the biggest thing I wanted to add that didn't make it in is um, that's a spoiler alert too. I don't know if people have like seen the thing by now um, before they listen to this, but when the Viking goes out the window, you know, he flies through the window and then it cuts to him uh, knocking the keys out of the guy's hand. And originally I had a shot where he, he goes flying and then we had a shot sort of looking at the door and we see him like bust out in slow motion and like the glass oh. is like co coming oh, at the so screen. Cool. Yeah, I know. It's like, and it was one of those shots where some some of the faculty's like, "Yeah, you don't need that," and some were like, "Yeah, it's really cool. You should do it." And it was kind of one of those things of like, "Well, get rid of it, and if you have time, go back and add it, add it in," and, which I didn't have time to do. And and also with the the yeah. layout, it got kind of weird going, you know, from across the screen to coming at the screen to going back across the screen. It didn't quite, it, awesome. you know, it didn't it didn't quite line up, but. But that was a shot that I really wanted to to have, especially because, like, the glass breaking, you know, he breaks the glass in the pool table, and the glass breaking, that's all simulated, um, which I didn't know how to do. But once I figured out how to do it, I was like, I can do that for the window. Yeah, you know, that, that window shot. Are raised. <laughs> and, uh, but then, yeah, it just didn't, didn't pan out. But that was probably the biggest thing I wish made it in. And then, you know, there's all sorts of little, you know, stuff. There's things I wish you know, I animated a little differently or, you know, had more time to, to work on it. Cause you know, there's, there's some, some shots I look at and I'm going, Oh yeah, that, that thing he does right there is too slow or, you know, whatever. There's all sorts of little things, you know, I still look at and if I only had like more time to do this, I could have made that month. better. 
<laughs> like, oh, dude, it reminds me of the when you said about the glass breaking. Do you remember the shot in Ratatouille? Um, oh, I'm pretty sure it's Ratatouille. For some reason, it's Ratatouille in my head that he's like stealing the food from the woman's the woman's house at the start. And mm-hmm. she shoots the glass as he's trying to escape, and he like just jumps out, and there's there's a slow motion. The glass is flying. There's cheese. There's a knife, mm-hmm. and he's just there smiling with the cheese, just <laughs> just jumping <laughs> out. Oh, those slow motion shots are cool. Here, there's always the future projects, man. There's always the future yeah. projects. There's always something else to 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 add in. But when it comes to short films, uh, so to the future. Uh, students who are going to go through this at Ringling and just students in general, what advice would you give them when it comes to making a short film? Um, like, is there anything that you would do differently that they could learn from? I think, I think probably just trying to keep your idea and your film as simple as you can because it, it gets it can get complicated, especially when you're doing pre-pro, you know, when you're, you're just drawing it, you know, you can, you can draw whatever you want to draw and it can be whatever you want. And then, and I did that a little bit like with, you know, um, and it's little things too. Sometimes it's things you don't think will be that, that big of a deal. It's like the, you know, the glass breaking or like the, you know, when the guy drinks and there's, you know, I had to simulate the beer and the mug and, and then I mean, it took so much time just to make the beer slosh around in the mug mm-hmm. correctly, you know, and it's one of those things that you, it's like you kind of know you have to do it. You don't know how to do it, but you don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. And then you end up spending two or three weeks worth of, of hours, you know, of time trying to get this thing to work. And you're like, this wasn't supposed to be this difficult. So I would, I think it would just be to keep it as simple as possible. And, and also too, I, I worried a lot, especially in the beginning about, I think a lot of people worry about this. You know, everybody wants their film to be, um, really different and everybody wants to be you know they wanted to have like the heartfelt moments and they want people to you know see it and be excited and laugh but they you know cry a little bit and be happy at the end and they want it to be like watching a pixar movie you know because that's yeah that's what you see but you know you most people in most films are not going to do that in a span of two minutes you know some some do and that's great but some don't and that's okay too and, but i you know i was working on even when i was doing the layout i was still tweaking the story some because you know i was really afraid that like when it came to the story i was afraid that it would either feel too much like a like a psa like a public service announcement you know and i didn't really want it to feel that way and i was also afraid that you know i was afraid that i'm like am i taking the you know is the issue am i taking it too lightly will people be mad that it's not more serious you know Will people not like it if it is too serious? You know, um, I was like, you know, the, the, the human character doesn't have a, a backstory. You know, I spent a lot of time in trying to come up with a backstory as to why he was drunk in the bar. And then you but then you have to explain it and there's not enough time to explain it because then you're 45 seconds in and there's no time to do anything, you know. So I think just trying to keep it simple and uh, and just knowing it's okay for it to, to be simple and mm-hmm. That it, I mean, it's, it's two minutes. It has to be simple. If it's not simple, it's not going to work. So, you know, Absolutely. just don't let yourself get caught up in, in trying to overcomplicate it, um, especially to try to, you know, to make it more, you know, emotional or heartfelt or something that, you know, it, it's just, it's probably not going to, you know, make you go through all like the range of emotions that, you know, the movie Up makes you go through when you watch. You know, it's just not going to happen. So just yeah, it's put, not long put that out of your put that out of your mind because it's just not going to happen awesome so yeah. yeah i think that's probably what i would what i would say would be helpful thanks thanks for uh, diving into into depth about that because um i completely agree with you it's uh we yes we can have all these passions uh from movies and stuff and we can obviously use things from that and learn from that but you also have to realize once again going back to the start we were talking about uh know your limitations it's <laughs> It's great being creative and stuff, but at the end of the day, deadlines are deadlines, and the the tough reality that you learned and uh, um, that's going to pay so much, it's going to pay off so well for you in the industry is because of your strict deadlines and your strict payment methods at Ringling. In terms of if you don't pass, then you're going to fail. Then you want to make sure that 
you get the job done like you want to make sure once again you're using your time sensibly and uh of your overthinking story yes it's, it's it's great having a passion for story we all love story we it's the reason why we love animated films in the first place and all these emotions like you said but it's it's and day it's about getting something that's uh going to help you get a job i'll keep saying that because it's the only thing that really matters and um once again enjoying what you're doing uh so thanks thanks for for diving into that so uh i've got a few more questions so probably got so we've got one more main section then we'll dive into the the fun random section so i appreciate everything you said so far it's been a blast talking to you so right this one's a fun one because i know you love 2d so how has um, for example, your vampire bat run, incredible, really fun, uh, oh, great, thank you. <laughs> great, great project, great idea. But how did your traditional animation uh, class and passion for that help you in terms of the three D side of things? Yeah, I think. Well, I guess in a few ways. I mean, I, cause we, you start out at Ringling doing traditional animation first. You do a semester of that before you even touch a computer. And then you're, you're still doing traditional animation once you start in the computer. Um, you know, you're doing like a ball bounce on the computer and then you're animating, you know, characters mm -hmm. by hand. And I really liked animating by hand. And um, like I said, I wasn't, you know, it's like when I, I was struggling, like, you know, doing um, not really the ball bounce, but like after the ball bounce, you're doing like a little two legged character and you have to model it and rig it and all this stuff. And, and, um, I was really struggling with that, but I was I was starting to get a little better at 2D, so that kind of I think that sort of you know helped me not just totally give up on the 3D because I kind of was like, well, I still like doing this, so you know that kind of helped me because there was a few times that I was just totally ready. I was like, you know, I don't want to do 3D. I'm just totally ready to get you know give up on that. And uh, but I like the 2D, so I think that kind of in one way helped me to sort of stick with it. Um, they kept you motivated. Yeah, and um, yeah, I don't know. It's like with two D, you know, there's something about you know, you when you're just putting the pencil to the paper, you can sort of feel it, and you, you're flipping through the pages, and you can that there's something about you can just sort of feel the the movement. And when I found that it was sort of difficult to mimic that with a computer, I mean, you're you're scrubbing through it, and it's kind of the same thing, but for some reason, the connection just is not it's just not quite as strong. I think, mm -hmm. but but I think trying to trying to understand 2D and then sort of, I don't know, try to think about 3D the way you think about 2D. Cause it's, it's almost, I think when I started, I was, I was thinking about them as sort of two different things, kind of two different ways of working. And then I think the more I try to, to think about 3D, the way I think about 2D, I, I think that has helped, you know, overall. Yeah. Um, it's just really helps, helps your, it, your way of thinking. Yeah. Just make it feel, you know, the way you want it to feel, because, yeah, it's like, I, you know, I would do a walk cycle on 2D, and I'm, you know, draw it, and it would, it would look cool, and then, you know, try to animate a, a walk cycle on the computer, and it just, it didn't, and I'm just going, okay, what, like, why, why can I make this look smooth, and this look cool, and this looks like garbage, you know, and it just takes some time, I think, to, to make that transition, there for some people, I mean, some people, I guess, catch on quicker than others, but, but, uh, yeah, definitely help me stay motivated. I think to keep wanting to to try and get it to that point. Yeah, well, that's that's an interesting thing, and I uh, I think that's a, another thing to highlight is when we're working on something so much. Trust me, we've all gone through it. There comes a point that you just get fed up, like you you get tired, you really kind of lose motivation, like you you start questioning yourself. Can I keep going? Um, I was when I was working my projects in university. Yes. Uh, same as you I, I worked my butt off I, I never uh, I always made sure to really put um, my foot down and get things done but there was many many times uh, experience with lecturers uh, of which I was just like I'm exhausted I, I'm not sure if I can keep going and sometimes doing something completely different really helped and like you said for example going back to your original main passion which is 2D that light that lit the fire again to help you keep the keep rolling and not stopping and um i think it's always important not to forget about these things like we have to always realize that sometimes you have to take a step back try something completely different uh even if it's not even art related at all it's uh like for example if you're doing 
uh, 24, like if you're working every day of the year, sometimes you just like there was a, there was a deadline, right? So one of our main deadlines in my final year and we had, so we had two weeks left to it. So I decided to take the whole week of the second last week off. I just took, I just took a whole week off. I was like, I'm not, do, I've worked my butt off nonstop yeah. for the whole year. I made sure that I would outwork everyone in my university. And I was like, I'm taking a break. So, yeah. and yeah, do you know the funny thing is, it's great, it's awesome having you. What did you think I did? I went to go play pool. So I went to go play, <laughs> so uh, I went to go, uh, my friends were like, uh, at university, like, Ross, all you do is work. Come and go play pool with us. So we all went to uh, play pool and play snooker. And they were like, oh my gosh, Ross is actually human. He's actually doing something that normal people do. And I was like, here, dude, yeah. I was loving making my 3D, but I needed the break. So I appreciate you asking me. So it, yeah. it, it, it plays such a big part. So sometimes just take that step back, do whatever it is. I don't know, go out hiking, go for a walk go play cards, whatever you like, just something that's completely away from your screen and it'll yeah. really, really make your work 10 times better. Right, let's uh, get on to the the main, uh, or the, the, the last section, or the second last section of the podcast, which, um, so I want to talk more about education because okay. it's, it's always uh, super important and uh, you've brought up tons of great points. Um, so, what, do you, what was it like? So this is a bit of education and the film learning how to pr promote yourself in terms of the film what was that experience like so you had to obviously make uh, instagram posts of when the film was going to go when to pre uh, premiere it and uh, and so forth making a trailer what was that that side of things just like that exposure aspect like um well i mean to be honest i didn't really know what i was doing so much as just sort of trying to make things and just kind of put it out there and hope mm -hmm. that somebody saw it you know and it is kind of tough. I mean, it, it the film festivals helps because the film festivals, if you you know if you get into a film festival, you kind of have an excuse to make a post. But hey, I got into this thing or I won something. You know, it kind of feels like you know justified as as opposed to just you know two weeks left, you know a week and a half left, a week left. I, mean, I did some of that too, but um, <laughs> you know it feels like at least you have something to say. Um, but yeah, I just tried to you know I made made the poster, you can post that, and make a trailer. Um, then a release date trailer and, you know, just trying to get people interested. Um, you know, and I had some people that, that did see the trailer and they would message me and, you know, we talk a little bit and they're like, Oh, I'm going to tell all my friends, you know, it's really cool. Cause I want to do this too. And so I think that, you know, that's helped. Um, but yeah, but promoting, promoting yourself is tough. Cause you know, if the right person sees something and shares it, then it can really take off. And if the right people don't see it, then it can not go anywhere. You know, and it's, it's, it's kind of out of your hands to some extent of, of how that that goes yeah um but yeah i think just you know and also like make a post that you think is is cool you know i would you know like i made the poster and i'm like you know i'll make like this i'll make it what i think looks cool and you know if i think it looks cool then someone else probably will too and and so i think i think that helps in just trying to generate excitement and make people you know be excited about showing it to people and even if you're not make them think you are so that they get excited about it too you know mm -hmm. and um and and yeah i think um i don't know like you know little things like i made I had stickers made and i gave some of those away and then you know just mail those to people and then they will put it on something and take a picture and put it on instagram and tag you in it and so it kind of you know kind of spreads that way and it has like a know, snowball it, effect in a way yeah, you know, make a, I made a Facebook page and just invited, you know, all my friends and family and they'll share it and then hopefully, you know, it just kind of keeps going. And But yeah, it's kind of out of your hands. I mean, you know, whether or not it takes off or not, you just kind of, you don't know, like... You're just hoping that it does well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. It's, uh, like, for me, I think that's one thing that I would love more education to talk about, so... There's two things I don't think is taught enough about, and it's the the business side of being an artist. A lot of people will just say, oh, I'm an artist, but they forget, they don't know how much they're worth, they don't know how to see um, the value they bring because they're just focused purely on their art. And then the, the other aspect is um, really understanding in-depth uh, money 
uh, and the importance of money because that and day your well-being is the most important it's it's a thing that i think education still overlooks or doesn't talk ab- uh, enough about and uh, the fact that you guys are entering these 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 short film festivals etc is is vital it gets played a big part for you um, for example, congratulations on winning the the Los Angeles Film Festival. Amazing oh, news, <laughs> uh, and uh, that obviously will have a compound effect that will lead to other things down the line. And you can use that in your CV and whatnot. And it's it's all about figuring these things out. And it's I, I say it all the time. It's all about uh, uh, connections, communication at the day. Um, for example, me reaching out to you. Like I would I wouldn't have known uh, about your work unless you shared it like um it can everything it's the same what everything i've done in my career if i didn't share anything i wouldn't have learned from it um so what what did it feel like when you got the news that you won when you won the festival yeah it's great you know it's it's a little bit odd just because it's you know you have um all these festivals you apply to and you just kind of send them off and like a month later, you know, you might find out if you won something mm-hmm. or you might not hear back at all. So you're just kind of like sitting around waiting, especially now since we, you know, we got sent home and, you know, everything's been kind of crazy and haven't been really going out much. So it's like, you know, everybody's been spending so much time just kind of in their house, you know, not really, not really doing anything. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is, it, it's, um, I don't know, there's like this weird sort of disconnect, I guess, in a way, because, you know, I live on the East Coast, and that's on the West Coast, and I don't know, you know, how people react to it or what the judges, how they reacted when they saw it. I mean, they obviously liked it because, you know, one, but um, but I guess to me it's like, you know, winning things is just kind of, I, I just sort of use it as evidence that people liked it, that it was being well-received, that sort of made me more confident about actually putting it out online for mm-hmm. everybody to see. Because... Um, you know, I guess that's kind of the big thing is even past the awards, I mean, even if you win a bunch of awards or no awards, if you put it online, if, if sort of the general public don't like it or don't get it, then it's, you know, it's like, yeah, you won the award, but nobody besides the critics liked it or, and did, you know, was it really successful? It's kind of that, that whole thing. But I just tried to, to use it as try to tell myself, okay, people do like it. They're enjoying it, you know? So, um, but yeah, it was, it, it was really nice. I mean, you know, anytime you win an award for something that, that took so long, you know, it makes it sort of feel like it was worth it, you know, and that it sort of paid off. Mm-hmm. I mean, you didn't just do it for no reason. Um, not that it's about the awards. You know, I, I should say that too, but but it is nice to be recognized, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's like, you, you know that they're perfectly, it's, uh, like, it means a lot when you, when you get your work noticed or something like after you put so much commit commitment into something, like even if you don't win, just to get nominated or to get mm-hmm. to make it into like the finals or like the a finalist, um, uh, or, and even more important, just taking that first step to be like, I'm going to submit it and try, even if you don't win anything. It's not like everyone who's listening right now. It's it's all about that first step. So I did this whole podcast about right. I know a lot of people won't do this, but. Like, how many of you will message me on LinkedIn and just say, hi, how are you doing? Um, it'd be great to connect with you. Uh, so I offer, I let everyone that, because a lot of people struggle with that first step, if you know what I mean, as in mm-hmm. taking that first step to 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 get to know someone, reach out and ask a question. Um, for me, I find it easy, but that's just because of my, pers- that's my personality. That's the type of person I am. Um, for a long time, I didn't know what people were going through because of imposter syndrome and I, I, I never experienced that uh, to that degree um, and I, I learned a lot from it and uh, I always I always say it so many times get get your, your work out there you did the same for the rookies you applied to the rookies um, and you made it to a finalist as well um, which was great and um, so so thank you for sharing that so um, one, one of the questions I want to ask um, because I don't get much opportunity to ask this uh, I know you've talked about your experience in Ringling etc but what is it like being a student in America um, well I there guess any... oh go ahead I was just going to say sorry I didn't sorry for cutting you off wasn't trying to be rude uh, no, <laughs> is there anything that you maybe you want uh, that you think needs to be changed or improved 
Um, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, my experience is a little different because I went to, um, I went to the university of Virginia for a couple of semesters before I went to Ringling. So I kind of have like the, the traditional university experience and the art school experience. Um, a lot, most people just have one or the other. Um, and they were very different. I mean, I was a little surprised, I guess, in a way of how, how different it, it was. Um, I guess the thing at Ringling is just, I mean, it, it is a grind. I mean, it, I think that's the, the biggest thing that people complain about. Um, especially people in, that do animation mm-hmm. is that it just, and you know, like the, the people at Ringling, the faculty and the administrators, they always tell you that it, it doesn't have to be a grind. Like, Oh yeah, you can, you can get your, your eight hours of sleep and you can go to the gym and you can do this and that. And they all say it can be done, but then it's like, no one can do it. Mm-hmm. You know, even, you know, even, you know, the sort of the, the, the best of the best. I mean, even, you know, like Jeremy, you know, the box assassins, one of the, the best films that that was made this year. And mm-hmm. Jeremy wasn't getting eight hours of sleep and, and eating right and, and going to the gym and being healthy. He wasn't doing any of that. He was dying like everybody else was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so it's kind of like, um, you know, I, I don't know if it's possible to change that. I mean, I don't, you know, you, you can't, I mean, unless you made college longer, unless you made it five years, not four years, which I don't, nobody wants to do that. Nobody can afford to do it. You know, mm-hmm. it's too expensive. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know, I don't know if there's a, a solution to that that problem because you can't you can't make the films less than what they are now because that you know it needs to constantly be better mm-hmm. than the previous years. So you know, I don't really have a solution to that. I mean, I, but um, I will say though, at least real life is not like that. So you know, it's not a constant grind. Yeah, you know, you might you might have you know a month or two. You know, might be a grind, but you know, most people, you know, you work, you know, you're 40 hours a week and then you go home. Um, so I guess I would say that if, if you are in art school and you are struggling, just kind of know that it's not going to be that way forever. If you can just make it through this time, it'll, yep. you know, you can sort of have your life back. I yep. guess it's just sort of being willing to sacrifice those, those few years, you know, to, mm-hmm. to get there. That's, that's the best answer it could have possibly. So I, yeah, you, you know that there it's, uh, because I think it's important to experience what it is to be on the other side. Like I think it's important to know what that level of pressure is like. Because once you experience it, and then once you go into the industry, it might actually be a wee bit easier for you. Um, yes, there's many cases when people maybe find industry a bit more difficult. But as long as you know what a taster of really true hard work is like, um, you're going to be like yourself, like you said there, it's going to be a little bit more relaxing, I guess, once you get into get get the ball rolling in the industry. So, th- thanks for. I know that was a difficult difficult question, so I appreciate you answering that. Um, right. So you've answered so many great questions. So I appreciate everything you're saying. Now let's have some have a good laugh. So it's question time, everyone. So it's it's some fun random questions. Uh, I'm going to bombard this man for the next ten minutes and uh, have a good laugh about it. Right, first one's such a random one, but I had to ask you: Donald Duck or Goofy? Who are you choosing? Uh, probably Donald. Oh, so I think. Why are you choosing Donald? Let me know. I don't know. I think that you know, just him being constantly just pissed off, everything is. It was funnier than you know. Goofy's just kind of dumb, and that I mean that's funny too. But I think you know Donald just you know, nothing goes right, and he gets so mad, and I don't know. He's yeah, always raging. I, I don't know. And goofy maybe <laughs> <laughs> like do you remember oh gosh it's ages since i've seen this like the goofy movie i loved that i will say i was a big fan of that as a kid but oh donald duck he, he, what a guy what a guy <laughs> yeah i will say too this has nothing to do with anything but the goofy movie does have the best animated pizza in any movie yes, i've ever seen it does <laughs> the, the the scene when they're going into the the vehicle and yes dude i could put, and then remember the famous waterbed scene <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh it's ages goofy was a legend and the famous fishing you can't forget the fishing uh okay well speaking of characters um do you have a favorite animated character i know i know that's a big question i i even i struggle with that one um yeah, gosh yeah i don't know i mean well i think my favorite characters are probably all in, in fantasia i mean i 
you know, I love Mickey as a sorcerer's apprentice. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love Mickey in general, but um, I love the alligator and dance of the hours. Ben alligator is his name. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was one of my favorites. And then also um, Chernabog, the demon at the end on bald mountain. Um, and that on bald mountain, whatever. Yep. Yeah. You know, yeah. And um, I always thought he was really cool, you know, as a villain. I mean, you know, it's sort of not his only appearance, I guess he's been in other things that like TV shows and things that are kind of cheesy, but I always thought he was really cool and really well animated. And, um, you know, just like little things like there's like this one shot where it's like close up of his hands and he's like changing these like demons into different things. But like, it, um, it's uh, pretty sure it's uh, Bella Lugosi, the guy who played Dracula originally. I think he, the reference for the hands doing all this like crazy, these crazy, moves with his hands and um so i always really liked really liked him as a, a villain i thought he was he was cool awesome no that's cool a good, good choice good choice um okay so since i know since you love uh 2d and uh well we all love 2d animation we all know they were the best ones everyone in the <laughs> chat right now i know you guys loved to the, the the old classics yes there's tons of great ones that have be coming out as well like i'm a massive fan of up uh it, hence why i brought it up earlier in the podcast but if you were to work on any of the traditional 2d animated movies what would you what would you choose if there was one out of all of them that you had the chance to work on is there one that stands out to you because for me it was so this this is a back and forth one for me but i'm a massive fan of beauty and the beast um, mm-hmm. I, I I thought that was beautiful, but it's it's always a it is a tough one. Is is there any or is there a yeah, few that you're a big fan of? Yeah, I mean, I feel like my uh, the first thing I think is probably Tarzan. Oh, I nice. Think, okay. Think, you know, if I if I had the ability to animate that as well as like you know Glenn Keane, you know, animating him like surfing on the vines. I mean, if I mm-hmm. if I could do that, I think that would be a lot of fun. I think if you're, <laughs> I mean. I mean, I say if you're not as talented as Glenn Keane, who was talented as Glenn Keane, but if you're not a really talented animator, that might be, it might not be a lot of fun to do it because it would be so difficult, mm-hmm. you know, with his anatomy and everything. I mean, trying to, trying to do that by hand would be, be kind of nuts. Um, but also Hercules. I mean, Beauty and the Beast, too. I mean, I think, you know, animating the Beast, I think, would be really cool. Mm-hmm. You know, doing Hercules or Hades. Like, Hades is one of my favorite villains, too, so I think yes. it would be a lot of fun to animate him. Um, that's a under I don't think that film's talked about enough it's that it's uh, Hercules Treasure Planet mm-hmm. and Atlantis I feel aren't talked enough about uh, I'm not sure if you agree with but I'd, uh, I thought they were great films yeah I mean I think um, Treasure Planet and Atlantis especially I think are not really talked about I think that they're kind of in that you, you know like uh, Disney movies kind of have they sort of go up and down in terms of popularity and if you like them when it's kind of like you know the the late 80s and 90s it kind of got really popular again and then sort of the 2000s it kind of dropped off again with atlantis mm-hmm. and treasure planet were kind of like in that low spot i think it just people just for whatever reason didn't didn't respond to it you know but yeah they're still they're still good movies i mean they're still still fun to watch and they've got cool characters made animation but for whatever reason it just didn't, didn't work succeed. out yeah <laughs> it did pop off for some reason yeah because if i like do you know when i'm not sure if you have this as well but so i have this picture of like my dream office and like do you know mm-hmm. you have like all your collectibles or like your like your mm-hmm. your uh your shelves behind you like if i there's one item that i would love on that would be the ship from atlantis so like, the big yellow kind of front uh like, it's almost like an eye kind of part i don't mm-hmm. I don't even know which animal it's got to be designed based off some sort of animal or some sort of fish, uh, yeah. surely. But if I could have that model, even like three D printed or something, oh, I'd be so happy. Mm-hmm. I think it's such a nice touch. Um, right. So a few more questions. Um, is there a <laughs> is there a movie you wish was a TV series? Hmm. Movie I wish was a TV series. Is there anything, or 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 even even e- this might be e- easier? Is there any film films that have had I, I don't know two films that you wish continued and just had mo- way more and more content of it? Um, 
I mean, I, I, I wish, the, like, the original Spider-Man movies, I, I wish those continued instead of going to be re- rebooted, because I always liked the, the original uh, Sam Raimi movies more than... With Tobey Maguire. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I don't know, the, the other, you know, Andrew Garfield and then Tom Holland are, I mean, they're fine, but I don't know, their they're versions of Spider-Man are just not, not really the Spider-Man that I imagined. I mean, I, I watched the, um, like, the 90s animated spider-man cartoon i don't know if you mm-hmm. ever saw that but i felt like the toby mcguire movies sort of fit more with that and kind of what i thought spider-man was so yeah i guess i would have liked to, to for those movies to have continued i guess they've made three of them so maybe i should just be be happy that i got those um yeah i don't know i mean a, a movie to be made in a tv show i, I don't know um so i feel like usually when that happens it, it usually just gets worse because like I, it's always I a risky about, one isn't it yeah i think about so I was thinking, like, you know, Tarzan, Hercules, but those did have, they made TV shows based on those movies, and they were pretty bad. Here, I mean, maybe oh, wait, 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 two seconds, two seconds, two seconds. So, okay. were, you, were you not a fan of the Hercules, the, oh, I, wait, there's, there's this Hercules, I loved it, and you did like, oh, dude. I mean, I mean, okay, I, 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 really, I did like it when I was little, I mean, when I, and the Tarzan thing, too, I mean, I remember, did you watch the Tarzan TV show? So, I'm pretty sure, yeah, like, I watched... I, I don't remember a lot of it, but I have watched it. So, I, I think it, I think it was okay. Wait, what was your what was your thoughts? Did you not like it? I, I, did, I mean, I haven't seen it in a while, so I shouldn't say. I mean, I did like it when I was a kid. Um, I mean, obviously the quality is not anywhere close to, to the movies, but mm-hmm. I I do remember in Tarzan. There's an episode where there's like this big like pit that he goes in. There's like this whole like other world in this pit with like dinosaurs are still alive. Right. So like I didn't Tarzan. Know this. Fighting, he's like fighting velociraptors or something and it, it makes no sense but it, i remember thinking that was cool just because you know i was i like dinosaurs growing up so anything with dinosaurs is, you know i thought was cool so um, literally just tarzan entered the land before time like uh, <laughs> he, they found he found the secret portal and just entered <laughs> yeah pretty much um but yeah i mean they they, uh, they were good for for what they were i guess um mm-hmm. No, good answer. I uh, appreciate you answering that. So, I've got two more questions, man. Uh, okay. If you're not doing animation, what career would you choose? Oh, gosh. I don't know. Um, <laughs> you know, the, when I didn't, before I had decided I was going to do this, I remember, like, thinking about, like, going to, to law school, of all things, actually, was something mm-hmm. I thought about doing, because I thought I would like that. I, I have no idea if I would or not. Um, but I really liked history, but I, I had no interest in being a teacher. Uh, you know, that wasn't my thing, but I liked history and I liked, you know, politics and I liked to argue about my opinions and things, especially when mm-hmm. I was, was younger. I, you know, as I've gotten older, I, I've liked to, to do that less, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was something I always, I kind of thought about. Um, that was an avenue you were thinking about. Yeah, interesting answer. Uh, first, uh, first uh, person to say law. Uh, law. It's always it's always nice seeing uh, different avenues uh, on the podcast. Uh, for me, it was always uh, it was always art. Uh, it was always uh, not art. Sorry, um, it was always sport. It was uh, always sport or art. So mm-hmm. I, I chose I chose the world of 3D and got addicted, got obsessed, and never stopped. <laughs> um, yeah. Right. This is the fun run question I ask every single guest. Okay. This is such a random one, uh, so I hope you. <laughs> it's always a good laugh. If you could have any fantasy creature or animal as a pet, roughly like the size of a laptop, from any world that you've, you've you loved or anything, what would you choose and why? We've had Pokemon's, we've had dragons from Harry Potter, we've had everything. What would you choose? Oh gosh, I don't know. I thought like my first my first thought is like a dinosaur, like a little like miniature like T Rex or something that you could like yes. fit on your. Head. That would be great. Uh, and I, I remember this is random, but I remember one time I was watching a video that I think it was Neil deGrasse Tyson and maybe like, maybe like Bill Nye the Science Guy or something. I don't mm-hmm. know. But they were talking about like how, um, how long it would take before we could like clone a dinosaur and like bring it back to life, like Jurassic Park. And they were talking about that. They're like, yeah, if we could, like if we could do that, like in theory, we could do like what you know, like they did with like different dog breeds and like make them smaller. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah, we could have like a T-Rex that was like, you know, this big, like 12 inches tall or whatever. And I was like, 
like everyone knows making dinosaurs is a bad idea but if you can make small ones like that would be cool like that would be a little sick. A tank like a lizard or something but <laughs> you know, a t-rex here i'm gonna have to check that out because uh, you just named like two legends there uh when it comes to space and science uh literally are like learning the like, chemistry as a kid like they that'd be like the go-to dvds and uh i only came across um uh what's the guy's name again you just said the guy who does all the space um, uh, Neil yeah so he, he's got his main channel that he interviews like everyone uh, mm-hmm. I highly recommend everyone to check him out because I only got introduced to him this year by one of my friends, Magisha, and uh, I've always been a space anything related kind of guy and I was like, how on earth have I never heard of this dude? And then mm-hmm. uh, he, he, you can listen to him, he's so smart, his brain is on like a whole other level. Uh, Logan, it has been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much for sharing everything, sharing your journey. Um, as always, folks, make sure to go check out uh, his work the full film will be in the link in the description below make sure to go check out and uh, uh, all the social media platforms you name it um, will be there as well so Logan thank you for coming on the show it's been great having you oh well thanks so much for having me I really appreciate it appreciate the opportunity and it's been a lot of fun anytime man so as always if you guys are new to the channel don't forget to smash the subscribe button as always leave a like if you enjoyed today's episode and with that said folks we will see you in the next episode Bye for now.